Hi there. One of the methods bank tellers and merchants learn in order to distinguish real money from counterfeit money is to examine genuine $100 bills over and over again so they're more likely to spot the counterfeit bills when they see them. In the same way, you and I can learn to recognize destructive people by knowing what to look for. Now, some of you may object to any attempt to identify wolves among us because it sounds so uncharitable and judgmental to call someone a wolf. Only Jesus knows a person's heart, we say, so who are we to judge? Yet Jesus himself warns us in Matthew 7, 15, that there are those among us who claim to be believers and they may even be leaders in the church, but they're actually vicious and ravenous wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing. The apostle Paul warns Timothy that there will be people who act religious, but they're puffed up with pride and they're unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, and cruel. Part of spiritual maturity is gaining the ability to discern between good and evil. Why is this necessary? Because Paul reminds us that even Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Evil pretends to be good, especially among church folk. And sometimes as Christians, we make a naive assumption and it gets us into terrible trouble. We assume that if someone claims to be a Christian and talks like a Christian and knows biblical principles and knows biblical verses, that means he or she is a committed Christian. But that's not true. Just like there are counterfeit $100 bills that attempt to pass for the real thing, there are those among us who attempt to pass for Christians, but underneath they are ravenous wolves. So how do you tell the difference? Well, Jesus told us, by their fruit, you will know them. A wolf can be an expert at talking like a Christian, but over time, when you observe his or her behaviors, they look more wolfish, more aggressive. As the saying goes, the sweetest tongue often has the sharpest tooth. So let me give you three things to watch out for. First, wolves live for the love of power rather than the power of love. Wolves also refuse accountability. They resist submission to authority. You've heard the phrase, lone wolf. Wolves in sheep's clothing put themselves as their highest point of reference, and they often use charisma and charm to win people over, but they don't actually have mutual or reciprocal relationships. People are to be used they to be possessed, exploited, or controlled, rather than to be loved or cared for. Second, wolves look like sheep and they talk like sheep, but they bite like wolves, especially when the sheep are disagreeing with them. Winning and being right is a wolf's highest value, and wolves do whatever they need to do in order to stay on top. And so when operating in a church or religious setting, their methods are often underhanded and cunning in order to appear less aggressive. They don't want to look like wolves. That's why they pretend to be sheep. So you have to pay attention. When you challenge or confront someone, what happens next? Is that person humble, reflective, willing to consider what you're saying? Or does he bristle, attack you, deflect, or blame you? Third, wolves are experts at deceit. That's why they're successful at looking like sheep. Wolves pretend to be good and pretend to care about the sheep. But those closest to them, their family, know the truth because they've been bitten again and again and again. But the wolf's ability to maintain his cover is one reason why it's so difficult for church leadership, including Christian counselors, to believe the sheep, the person who's been wounded by the wolf. Those in charge fail to see the wolf as a wolf and assume that what's really happening between these two people is just merely two sheep biting one another. Look again, look harder. Wolves have much sharper teeth and stronger jaws than sheep do. A sheep cannot harm a wolf, even if he pretends he's wounded, but a wolf kills the sheep. It's interesting that God uses the word wolf as a poignant word picture to portray this type of person who lives among us because a wolf is a predator. It has strong jaws and 42 teeth designed to stab its prey to death. And the Bible warns us in Proverbs 12, 18 that reckless words pierce like a sword. Verbal abuse is real, and when it's regularly done, it's lethal to the person being pierced by it. So let's not naively close our eyes and think that there are no wolves in our churches because they're everywhere. And you and I are mandated by God to have our senses trained to discern the difference between good and evil, precisely because evil pretends to be good. If you found this helpful, please share it with a friend. Take care and God bless.